Okay. Welcome to my presentation uh, about modern telecom models. Um, as we are a small group, if you have any questions or feedback, just uh, ask right away. Um, I'm a consultant with Perl and Linux in uh, Germany. I'm using Perl like 16 or 17 years. And most of my work is uh, are online shops or related projects, web database projects. And the software I'm using is called Interchange. Uh, I know he's using it and knows it, but most we don't know about it. I, I know of it. <clears throat> yeah, we, we used it a long time ago for a project, uh, maybe 10 years ago. Okay. Uh, no longer a client, so. Okay. So, so Interchange is uh, around since 1995. It was about the time when uh, the TGIPN model was uh, released. Um, yeah, well, I can say it's fast and stable and it's quite flexible and extensible. So this is a good thing about Interchange. So, a couple of very big companies are using it in the States. One of them is Backcountry. They are a big outdoor retailer. And they're using it for their online shop and also for their uh, processes in, inside the company for um, putting the items into parcels. And it's all automated based on interchange. Our big one is FragranceNet. And of course, there are a lot of others which are using Interchange. There's a selection of them on the website of Interchange. So, myself, I'm running about 20 Interchange projects, which are in six countries. That is the States, and uh, in Europe, it's French, Netherlands, Germany, Switzerland. And yeah, it gives me 80% of my income. So I always like it and use it a lot. So that sounds wonderful. Really? After all these years working with Interchange, I of course have a lot of experience and insight in the software. I'm a developer myself. So the Interchange community. Uh, consists only of a small group of developers and there's actually little activity there are coming some patches in, in, in the, into the source code but there are no bigger projects going on or refactoring or anything anything of that last uh, bigger thing was the uh, UTF-8 integration um, <coughs> And also it's about the same people which are working on them. There are not no fresh people coming in with fresh ideas. Um, I don't know if it's due to the fact that it's not part of CPAN. It was never put into CPAN. Uh, but I have a couple of other reasons to explain that. So for the developer, uh, I said before it's flexible and extensible. That still is true, but um, the software itself is very monolithic. It's, uh, it's split up modules, but it's still, uh, all the parts of the codes are intertwined. And if you want to uh, find stuff, it's hard to find unless you are really uh, <coughs> accustomed with it. And, and yeah, part of the reason is it started 15 years ago. Oh. 17 years ago, and still there's code in it which is like 15 years or 10 years old, and it's hard to change that. So it's the same code base, more or less, a couple of changes, and it's hard to find things. If you have an interchange application, you have first interchange server, and then your interchange catalog for your online shop, and there are, there's a global configuration, catalog configuration, there's a lot of variable spaces, and if you are extending things, you have filters, 
you have uh, user text, you have a lot of things, and it's hard to know where to go to make changes. So, um, from the user perspective, uh, as my customer, the things which are really lacking is uh, the templating is pretty obscure, or for it's kind of like to template toolkit, uh, the logic behind this is sometimes very hard to understand. And also, I, after working all, all the time with the templating stuff, I don't like if, if the text or whatever you call it, lists are directly in the HTML, which makes uh, really hard to interact with uh, web designers. So, if you look at other product, products in the market, be it Magento or our software, they have a lot of um, standard features which you can download and add, uh, be it like uh, support for reviews or wish lists, all these things you really need in your uh, online shop today. Um, you can do all that in that chain, that's not a problem. But you can't go to a app store or whatever and download stuff. And also the demo for interchange you provide is pretty bad. And there's no work going on to that. Um, and we learned that many, many people which are using interchange start off this demo and carry all the baggage and the uh, mistakes which are in it. Okay. So, um, so I said interchange is pretty sold fast, or what are kind of imitating. So it's kind of like a Verino. And there's not, not a lot of innovation. So we learned that, well, first of all, um, I looked around for alternatives in that change in CPAN and with Google. So if you go to CPAN and searching for terms like card or e-commerce, uh, you don't find a lot, which I think it's kind of surprising. There are so many uh, online shops out there, and probably there are uh, good parts running on power. So if you look in CPAN, you can find uh, a module you can't handle. Um, but that seems to me like a dead project. It doesn't have uh, a mailing list, there are no uploads. So that's not an alternative. The next thing you find is Agora. But um, it is also not on CPAN. And I download the source code, and this doesn't look uh, any better than Interchange. It looked like more like Oscommerce or something like that. And uh, more or less new is business card generic, which is not so generic, I think, because it's more or less a, a way to port over Oscommerce project support. That was what I gathered from the, from the documentation. Okay. So, the situation right now is we have a problem with the existing code base interchange. And we have missing alternatives. And we have strong competitors like Magento and a lot of other software which is used for online shops. Both in the open source world and commercial products. So that means we need a plan. So could be a writer from scratch. Well, that's too much work, huh? Modern call to the rescue. So what means modern call? Especially uh, in the context of uh, modern call commerce. First of all, we have Flag PSGI. This is kind of a new way of uh, CGI to call and allows application to run on whatsoever web server or configuration and the applica application doesn't have to change. So you're not worried about, about more Perl, uh, reverse proxy and so on. Uh, which is a good thing because it's believed some, as of some responsibilities. Uh, we, are, we have great object-oriented frameworks for Perl now, for Perl 5 which is smooth 
and this uh, moon is pretty new, it's a light red moose, basically. So then we have a number of web frameworks uh, which help us programming uh, for web projects. So this catalyst is uh, around for quite some time. It's a bit heavier, so some people came up with Dancer, which is pretty neat and more lightweight, and there's also malicious. So you have a number of things to choose from. So we have interchange. This has to, had to do everything what is needed for a web application. It had to uh, dispatching requests incoming from the user. It had to do parameter parsing. It has to do, have uh, its own session handling and its own template engine. So we have a small group and it's hard to come to do all these tasks. So it's uh, pretty good if we can delegate the task to other modules. And also important for the success of the new project are uh, extensions. So people can easily download or write their own extensions and share it with other people. So in the scope of our projects, we have bundles which provide uh, functionality to uh, to certain type of uh, storage or something like that. So we will have a DBI bundle which gives us all the database uh, support we need. And the next thing is about extensions and plugins, which are really popular right now. We have a lot of plugins for Dancer or many other software, which allows you just uh, download the plugin and install it, and then you have a new functionality, like reviews or wish list or whatever. On a smaller scale, you have hooks, uh, which allow you to uh, control and manipulate the flow in your program. I will show you an example of what a little bit later. And my policy for this new project is first of all, keep it simple and stupid. Um, that is principle I'm, I'm following, following for all my projects, <coughs> but it's especially worth to consider for, for commerce, because you have uh, in your company often a complex business logic, but this is uh, normally to deal with the ERP system or whatever you have in-house. But on the other end, the online shop should be pretty simple, which is good for customers, so we, they can easily find their way, and also for the programmer, it doesn't have to uh, go great lengths to do things. And we all know if, if your shop is uh, slow or complicated to use, we get less sales. And I don't want to assumptions about uh, the things in the background, like do we have a database, uh, which templating system we use, and so on. And the expressive thing is just uh, like it's in Dancer, you can really, if you read the source code, you see what's happening. Even if you don't know a lot of about Dancer. So, instead of the Rhino, my future I see for modern per commerce is more like a colony of ants working all together to reach a final goal. Um, I talked about adjustments before, so um, it's a major part of the online shop is of course the shopping cart, and I don't say you have to store it in the session, it would be the simplest way, and if you have a more complex project, uh, you would store the items in the cart in the database to DBI. But that is already done, uh, the new source code. But what about the web service? I mean, 
it's hard to imagine to store the card on the web service. But on the other hand, there could be a card somewhere else, like wishlist on a public server on the, uh, on the web service. You can pull from. Um, you've also accounts for your customers, so you need some kind of account manager. So most likely, um, the customers will be stored in a database with DBI, but why not use LDAP or some external authentication, authentication methods like OpenID or even Facebook or whatever. I don't want to make an assumption about the template engine. Um, we have a template toolkit, which is uh, widely used in the core community, or my own uh, templating engine, Template Fluid, uh, which has the benefit that you can use uh, pure HTML templates and put all the connections to the code in a specification file, which makes it really easy to exchange your HTML with uh, web designers. And this is often concern for me because I'm a single developer and I'm getting these uh, designs, this HTML, CSS from external side and often they of course make mistake or they don't don't, uh, don't get the corner cases because you get really steady, static HTML and you dynamic HTML for your application. So what happens if there's a long title of a product? Or how are the error messages displayed? So you notice, okay, there's a mistake in the layout and gives the stuff back to the um, web designer. And if you have all this templating in the, in the template, the temp like the text and stuff like that, uh, it makes it hard. I often end up with sending it back and then have to really edit HTML manually, which was not really easy and Base of time, actually. Um, I don't even want to make assumptions of a web framework, so you could use it with Catalyst, Dancer, Malicious, or whatever exists in the per community. Um, of course, I have my own preferences, uh, and as a new project, I have to start with something which I reasonably like. So, um, to make my no new shopping cart uh, e-commerce project fly, um, I'm using Dancer. I'm using Dancer because it's uh, yeah simple and stupid, and I like the syntax. I started um, about I think eight or nine months ago with Dancer, and I already built uh, three or four more or less complicated application on top of it. And I didn't need to use much source code and stuff like that. And I think it's really great. And one important point for Dancer, it has a great community. So if you go to IRC and talk to these people, you get help. And, and uh, yeah, often they make patches for you and stuff like that. So, yeah, as I said, the templating, I will just do the template fluid. But of course, in your own application, you can do something different. With Dancer, you have the uh, selection for of about, I don't know, 20 or something templating engines. So if you pick one of, out of uh, CPAN, it's very likely that Dancer supports it. And last but not least, uh, DBI is the obvious choice for the storage in an online shop project. Yeah, but some people might think of something knows SQL for part of uh, part of the queries to make it faster or whatever. So, yeah, to start with a simple web shop, you need some key features, so that's the navigation, uh, card, checkout, and, and you need some accounts. So, after all the experience, I, I had the shopping carts, 
and how do they work? Um, I, met, I could say about the card. So first of all, in the card you have the items, and the important things about the items is uh, SKU name, quantity, and price. Of course, there could be more, but this you really need. Um, I also say the price must always greater than zero because if you are making mistakes in the database and the, and the price is zero, people can order it actually. And if you want to have free items like gifts going along with the, with the shopping cart because you order more than a dollar worth of items, uh, that would be part of a plugin or a hook or whatever. So we really avoid this mistake. Um, we combine automatically items which are the same. So if you put one item two times in the card, you get it two times and not in different lines in the card. Uh, this also checks whether the product has the same attributes. So if you are putting an item in two different colors, you get two different items in the card. We really want to have multiple cards because uh, I will show you a minute that you can use the card as a wish list, for example, and people want to store cards, and you can have multiple cards for other purposes, like one customer of mine has a normal card, and some items are not available, but you can put it in the card, and it ends up in the back of that card, which will be treated after the order, as kind of safe card, but if the items come available again, they can put it automatically back on the normal shopping card. So there are lots of reasons for multiple cards. Uh, and what make possible is that the cards can be stored everywhere, meaning that, uh, yeah, as I showed before, we can have the partner session and, and so on. And I want to use uh, caching of the prices as far as it goes. Because currently interchange uh, the card, the price would be calculated at every lookup. And if you have fixed price, that's really unnecessary. So so how would like how would I just want to show you how the methods are going for the card. Uh, you see that this, um, this is kind of data syntax because you have no dollar sign in front of it, it's not a variable. Uh, this plugin defines this card keyword and other keywords, so you can just say card, card, and then the add, add method. You put the item with the skew, name, price, and quantity in the card. And there are more methods in the rest, uh, removing an item on the, from the card and uh, get the count of the items in the card and, and so on. So, and also an important thing for me is to say everything is a card. So we can have safe cards as a card. Wishes are cards, which is pretty obvious. But you can also say you have a collection in your project, and the collection comes to card too. The collection is like a number of books which are related to each other. And it makes it much easier to put this collection in the, into a card if it's the card in the same. And you can use the same code for it. Yeah. So the multiple cards work like that. After the keyword, you put uh, the name of the card, and we can use the same function as the uh, same method as before. I think this is really easy to use and use. So this is an example how interchange uh, is more complicated and how we can um, 
use it much better way. Um, if you have a uh, if you have a stock if you have a stock in your database and your products are limited, so you make an inventory. Uh, you want to prevent to them to ordering more than the quantity which is in inventory. That's the second one. It's just it's a configuration statement that changed mocks quantity field. It's an inventory table and the quantity field. Or in some cases you want to have more than the minimum. So this works, but it's not very flexible. And the other disadvantage is to keep the code for this around an in, in interchange. So it makes the makes the application more, more heavier and you have to cover all cases. So the simpler with um, and more flexible with Mithesi, you just write a hook or a before card add and this hooks receive the card and the item. So you can say inventory checks in the product table, normal split the SQL statement. And if the quantity is ordered, it's greater than inventory. I put an error message into the item, which says out of stock. And after all hot hooks are run, uh, it's easy to figure out that this item should be entered to the uh, card and shows the error message to the customer. And the really benefit is that you can do whatever you want in the book. You can make complex uh, checks for the products or even simple ones. And it's just sitting in your application. So we have uh, the most of card hooks are before card app and after card app. And after card app I'm using for the DVI card which just writes a new item into the database. Which I think is pretty slick. The same goes for before card remove. An example for before card remove would be that you prevent an item to remove from the card. Like if you have uh, two items going alongside, you can do that. And after card remove does the same. The DBI just removes the I don't need data. The next step after the card is the checkout process. This can be a really complicated process with a lot of things going on. You have taxes applied to the card with the careful shipping. Um, customers pay with credit card, PayPal, or whatsoever. And you have to issue an invoice to the customer. So, so interchange practice is its own thing with uh, online payment, credit cards. Uh, it allowed to it allowed to write your modules for new payment gateways. That was not a big problem. But uh, I think it's a better idea to put this thing also out into CPAN. There are a lot of business online payment models for authorized net, for PayPal. And it's better to use this or write new ones instead of putting this in your application. Yeah, business credit card just helps you to check the credit card number. Okay. The similar thing is uh, for text models on CPAN. That's things like text for Canada or uh, business text VAT is for, for European business. So we want to integrate this with the case. And as you know, in some countries it uh, can be really complicated. Like I talked to uh, interchange users which are in the New York area 
and they have city, county, tax, whatever, they are permanent created. So, in that change we have a lot of texting code, but there's no reason to keep it inside the application. We want to really factor out in a separate module. I mean, if it's a simple text system we have uh, in Germany, you don't need all this. You can really write it down in a few lines of code. Same thing goes for shipping. Uh, the best way, I think, for customers and for the business is to reduce the shingle shipping. They can write down the shipping cost in a few lines of text, which relates to a few lines in code. To, for example, you say everything up to um, up to fifty dollars worth of the card pays like five euros of shipping or five dollars, and anything above it is free. Um, I know it's not so easy in, in, in the USA because you are a much larger country. But I still think simply shipping is better. So, and of course I'm the programmer and I would like to make the business people the complicated decisions and calculations which end up a simple solution for the customer and the programmer. So yeah, well, but I, in most projects I've seen which are running in the States, they have really crazy shipping with all calculations and you know, uh, UPS has uh, stuff like fuel surcharge and that's getting really complicated, but the point is you can do this with uh, the new Perl-Commerce project. Just come up with your own module for this calculation and you can share it with people. Yeah. That's what's really interesting, the shipping APIs. I work for um, I wrote a model for a big company in Germany called Hermes, and I'm working on a similar model for a company in French. And you can, first of all, produce shipping labels with this API and tell them which partial you will send, and you can really get, uh, have good tracking of that. Do they have in Germany the uh, the Postal Service and UPS have uh, shipping calculation real time, so you feed them how much weight is the package, and then they'll provide you back uh, shipping costs. Do they have that in Germany? Yeah, because they have the same. Yeah, pretty good. So, as I said, I would want to make all the text and shipping or whatever really easy but allowing to make it also complicated. So, if you have your card, you have the subtotal of all items, and for the price the customers to pay, you have to add things like the tax and fees and whatever. And here are two simple examples, so if you want to have a fee, like for handling or something like that, just say apply cost, and want five dollar or euros whatever. And if it's a tax, you can say it's ninety uh, percent, and it's relative to the uh, work of the card. It's a different thing both of them. So it's easy as allows also to caching the codes. Uh, of course, I'm aware of it's of complicated things, so. I will do a similar statement where you can provide a subroutine which calculating this post and give it a name for display. Another nice feature I'm working on is are PDF invoices. And um, for my templating engine, I built an extra module template to PDF, which converts the HTML template to PDF. The font support. Hmm? As the font to support, that's always the problem. Getting the fonts right. Yeah. It's good. Works uh, well. Not the uh, not the uh, hard part of it. Hard uh -huh. part is figuring out uh, how to uh, 
render the stuff in PDF. So there's a lot of calculations done. Um, this is uh, running for one project, pretty fine. But I, but I had the template before and could work on my way. And, but I will continue to improve that and I'm working for the next project where it generates a shipping label for the French post and they have, you have to do placements and logos and stuff, all stuff and barcodes on them. So it takes some time. But I think it's a better way to do it because you have just one template which, can use, which you can show in the receipt on the web page and you can have the same for the invoice for printing. So this one customer integrate the shipping label with the invoice. So you can just put this in, in, the, in the parcel. So accounts. Well, I have a keyword for that as well as account. It doesn't matter, so logins. Yeah, just username. It's a uh, username from the from the form and the password. And if this is correct, it returns true and it goes maybe to customer service. And if it's not correct, it goes back to login. So redirect is the dancer keyword. That's that's normal HTTP redirect. And this is a route definition in Tensor. Just says if you will get a URL slash login. And when it is post, it runs just as subroutine. So that's pretty easy, right? Another thing my, my account stuff is doing is uh, checking permissions. So if you're going to the URL my wishlist, it's a wishlist link. Um, check if you are allowed to create wishlist. That means ACL, access control. And if you have the permission to create wishlist, you just go to the, uh, again as a template, my wishlist in this basic. If not, the account status with the info, please log into the wishlist, and that will next. And goes back to login again. The accounts are handled by account manager, meaning you can have different account providers, even if your application. Uh, account providers would be like BBI and OpenID and so on. So we need to oops, just need login about account information, login status, for the password and registration. The existing account providers DBI. Also use LDAP H password like the for Apache, OpenID and so on. So everything for Asterix I didn't write yet, but it's in the future. Access control is, is done in a simple way. So you have users and roles and user can part of multiple roles and um, the permissions are just text strings like uh, create order, uh, create wish list, and the permissions are usually tied to a role, but for a specific case you can tie the permission to a user as well. This basically is the same system Drupal is using and I really liked it, so mm -hmm. I'm using it for, for my stuff as well. Sometimes, uh, like, in, uh, like in the request like RT, they're using uh, inheritance of uh, groups and stuff like that. But I think if I want to have a simple application, it's not just as much. And for all this uh, account stuff, I will create hooks too, so you can get around that. Um, of course, you use forms in your web shop, and you have to care about the display, validation, storage. Um, that's the point we are not so far right now. Especially, I didn't find a good model for validation. There are many of them, and 
he chesses uh, advantages and disadvantages. So one thing I really like to have is um, tie error to the form field that is displayed. That's not always so easy. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, sh it, sh it should, but... Yeah, no, it's very hard. Yeah, and also a way to store things like, I mean, uh, I try to have forms uh, stored in the database, meaning the fields and stuff like that, but that it's not so flexible, so we came back to using HTML forms and have all the information to the form in specification, whatever, which we can read and then do the validation stuff like that. Okay, but I will give this more thought in the future. And also I'm thinking about web services because an uh, important thing to the success of many uh, sites is they provide web service with a, with a API. I would like to do the same for Entity. And the API should be accessible through the standard-based REST, XML, RPC, and so. Of course, I think REST is the best because it's simple and it's much more lightweight than the other two, especially so, which is complicated and really sucks up many resources. And out of that, this API I'm thinking about and web services, I would like to uh, put the future backend on top of that. So I don't have to make assumptions of the underlying database and so on. So the new project is called the JSE Shop Machine, and I already did a project based on that. It's VLC State of Graph, it's a procurement solution for American embassies and libraries around the world. And the next thing I'm doing is another project, which is not a little bit secret, but but uh, this needs a payment uh, gateway, the other one not. And I would, with that, I'm making the uh, support for business online payment through charge keyword, and in this case, it's ACI payment. So that's one of the next projects. And based on the API I provide, uh, you will get an uh, open ERP interface based on XML RPC. And of course, it's important for your online shop to have a backend to configure things. And if you don't have ERP, manage your products in it. Products, orders, customers, whatsoever. And another custom, customer from me uh, came up with the idea to put in a CRM on top of that. Let's see if he comes up with the money for that. Okay. Yeah, and very important for the success of the project is the demo shop, which be, will be uh, coming out in the next few months. So we need the uh, yeah, build templates for that navigation and so on. So that was the most of it, and the project is on CPAN and GitHub. So you can look at it and Here's the documentation. Uh, if you have any questions, just drop me an email or meet me on IRC. Yeah. The slides are available. This is URL you also find in the conference. Conference schedule. Yeah. Do you have an IRC channel for this project? I don't have one right now. Okay. You can just go to uh, interchange or dense Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any questions on that? Not until we get into it. <laughs> Not until we dig in and start looking at it. Yeah. Looks great. 
So this is the replacement for interchange. This is the this is the end of interchange. I know. The new beginning. New beginning. Uh, new beginning. Uh, it's certainly the end of my my involvement in interchange, yeah. which was more than like fixing bugs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use it for my new projects and trying to introduce it in old projects, which is of course more complicated. Yeah. But we learn from all the interchange uh, projects we know about it, there are different states of the interchange version, so people are really reluctant to upgrade. Yeah. Upgrades have you know historically that. been a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably also a thing I would like to improve the upgrades. That's hard. Uh, Drupal does a good job with upgrades, with the um, database management, the way they have uh, the patches for the database. It's very, very well done. Uh, I don't know if you've done that. Yeah, I did that. That's a pretty good idea, but you can also come into trouble with that. You can. You have to be very careful. Yeah. So back up your database, back up your application. Yes. Especially you have to change all the code for like going. Uh, when I went with the project from Drupal 5 to Drupal 6, I had custom code written and you have to put it to this code rewriter and a couple of things going on, so please make sure to uh, back up everything. And the first time I didn't succeed, so I had to pull everything back and start again a couple of months later, then it worked okay. Yeah, but this idea with the database patches is a really good idea. Yeah. It's, it's the best solution I've seen. It's not perfect, but it's good. Mm. Great. Looking forward to looking at it. Okay. <coughs> Thanks for listening. Thanks for coming. <laughs>